Good morning and welcome to FPC of Hilton Head Island. My name is Hannah Kroger and I'm the Director of Ministries with Youth. We are so glad to have you join us for worship this morning. We believe coming together as a church family to worship God is one of the greatest joys in life. If you're a visitor, we would love to especially welcome you. If you are a regular attender or member, we are so glad you're here today. Announcements can be found in the bulletin and all details can be found on the church website. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at info at fpchhi.org with any prayer requests or comments. Again, welcome. Let us joyfully worship God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Through his resurrection, he opened the gates to eternal life. Through his resurrection, we have a new life here and now. Alleluia, let us worship the Lord of life. Please join in with us as we offer this song of praise and we're reminded of the cross. Our prayer is that we're reminded of the power of the cross and the resurrection. Jesus, please keep me near the cross. Sing along.
Let us hear our children's message. Good morning and happy Sunday, church. I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. His name is Nico, and he helps with the message on Wednesday nights during WOW Family Worship. But lately, he's been at home watching worship with. So how have things been going in your home, Nico? Pretty good, I guess. I like being able to play more, but man, do I miss my friends from school. I mean, my little sister is just not that fun to play with. My mom is always telling me I have to be nice to her. That I have to forgive her when she messes things up. And she messes things up all the time. But I want to know why. Why, I ask you. Why do I always have to be nice and forgive her? Oh, Nico. Sometimes it is hard to show love and forgiveness to other people. But we have to because God first showed love and forgiveness to us. I know it's not always easy, Nico, but I want you to think about how much God loves us. So much so that he sent Jesus into the world to save us and to show us that we can have a second life in heaven with God. You see, if we allow God's love to fill up our hearts, then we have love to share with those around us. And if we ask God to forgive us when we make mistakes, then we probably ought to try to forgive others when they make mistakes. Will you pray with me? All right. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me so much that you sent Jesus. Thank you for preparing a place in heaven for me. Help me show others your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This joyful Easter time, oh, we'll sit and sadness. Our Lord was crucified, has filled the hearts with gladness. And Christ who once was slain, now first his three-day
has arisen. We just heard the choir sing it. Christ has arisen. We know it in our hearts. Christ has arisen. In this season of Eastertide, as we recognize the risen Christ, we hold in our hearts and minds the words of Paul's letter to the church in Rome. We are no longer bound by sin. Just as Christ was raised from death to life, we too may live a new life. We also know that we can fail to live as a people who have the risen Christ at the center of our lives. So we pause each week to come to God with open hearts, to acknowledge our sins and our shortcomings. Let us join together in our communal prayer of confession. Lord of life, we have a new life, an abundant life in you. Forgive us when we don't live it, when we let fear get the better of trust in you, when we're self-centered instead of God-centered, when we fail to love one another, and whenever our new life in you regresses to our old life of sin. Through your spirit who lives in us, empower us to live our new life eagerly, boldly, and wholeheartedly this day and every day. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. We are no longer slaves to sin. For in Christ, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed us from the power of sin and death. In Christ, we are new creations. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Let us offer thanks and praise for this life-giving grace as we sing together, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Easter season, listen to the Word of God from Romans 6, 1 through 11. Then what are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk into newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resur resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again, and death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. This is the good news of our Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I thank God for Brooke and Jordan for their helping to lead us in worship this morning by reading the passage of scripture that is the basis of our message. Let us join our hearts and minds as we prepare to hear God's holy word to us this day. Let us pray. Lord God, by the life-transforming power of your Holy Spirit, help us to hear these words, not as my words, but as your words to us by the power of your Spirit, and then help us to live them this day and always. Amen. We are in the holy season of Easter. You can hear that, especially in the music that we have been singing. It is that time when we celebrate our Lord's resurrection, his victory over death. Because of his resurrection, we also celebrate our own resurrection to eternal life one day. That is why we as Presbyterians call memorial services, services of witness to the resurrection. Services of witness to the resurrection. We witness in those services to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And because of his resurrection, we witness to the resurrection of the person who has died. Did you know that our resurrection is not only to eternal life after we die, but is also here and now? That's what we learn in today's passage. So you can think of our resurrection like a painting. Think, for example, of Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting, The Last Supper. In that painting, you see most obviously the 12 disciples and Jesus sitting at that table. That is what our resurrection to eternal life is like. It is more obvious. It's the thing that we see the most when we read the Bible. Think about Leonardo da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper, again, though. When you look at it more closely, you can see other details, such as the spilled salt that is on the table. That is what our resurrection here and now is like. It is in the Bible, but it is not as obvious. It is something we have to look a little more closely to be able to see. Just like the spilled salt is often missed in da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper, we often miss the passages in the Bible that emphasize that our resurrection is also here and now. I invite you to the see the truth of our resurrection here and now anew. One of the best opportunities to do that is in this passage that we just heard read. Paul, in this passage, sees resurrection as a process of transformation that begins here and now in baptism. He writes, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we've been buried with Christ by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too might we walk in newness of life. To walk in newness of life is to live our resurrection here and now. That's what he's saying. To live that process of transformation before we die. In the early church and in some churches today, that process was and still is signified in how a person is baptized. A person being baptized will step down into the baptismal pool in the early church and in some churches today. In stepping down into that baptismal pool, she signifies her burial with Christ into death, death to her old life of sin. After being baptized, then she would step up out of that same baptismal pool onto the other side, signifying that she has been raised with Christ to a new life in him. 
Our resurrection here and now is also evident in Paul's words in 2 Corinthians when he writes, while our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. That is the process of resurrection here and now. We hear that same process of resurrection here and now emphasized in one of our catechisms, one of the confessions in the Presbyterian tradition. It's the Heidelberg Catechism. And in that catechism, we read these words. By Christ's power, we too are already now resurrected to a new life. By Christ's power, we too are already now resurrected to a new life. Our resurrection here and now, of course, is not the same as our resurrection to eternal life after we die. But Paul sees both as part of that same process of resurrection. Resurrection here and now, continuing to resurrection to eternal life. It is the work of the Holy Spirit in us, of course. It is not something that we are able to do on our own. We cannot do that on our own. Paul believed that this process of resurrection continues in us here and now until it is consummated one day in eternal life. That is when the process of our resurrection will be complete once and for all. We can think of our resurrection living it like this. Jesus' resurrection is like a tide that sweeps people up in its life-transforming grace here and now in the power of the Holy Spirit and bears them into the world to help God transform it. It is a process, as we read in 2 Corinthians. Listen to how the Christian writer George MacDonald pictures this process in us. He writes that before we become Christians, we are like a living house. But God, when we become Christians, begins to rebuild us. At first, he says, we see what God is doing. There are things in our lives that need to be fixed, so he begins fixing them. But then, he says, God starts throwing out a new wing here, putting on an extra floor there, running up towers, making courtyards. You think, he says, that God is making you into a decent little cottage, but God has bigger plans. He, MacDonald writes, is constructing a palace that God intends to live in himself. Here's an example of that process of resurrection here and now in us. There was a member in a previous church I served, and she was in graduate school at the time. For one of her classes in graduate school, she developed a questionnaire about faith. One of the questions she asked in that questionnaire about faith was this. How has practicing Christianity shaped your life? How has practicing Christianity shaped your life? Here's how one person answered her question. Immeasurably. Because of the work of God's spirit in me, I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago, five years ago, or even a year ago. For example, I'm more patient, kind, generous, self-controlled, forgiving, compassionate, and loving, even to people I don't like. I'm also more attuned to God at work in the world and in people. I am not perfect, of course, However, by God's grace and the Spirit in me, I'm empowered to live as Christ's faithful disciple. That is a picture of someone swept up in the life-transforming power of the resurrection here and now in the Holy Spirit. The end goal of this process, of course, is for us to be more and more like Christ. I've been watching the documentary on Netflix and ESPN, The Last Dance. It's about the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan. 
And in that documentary, in one of the episodes, you hear one of the old commercials that Michael Jordan was in, the commercial, I wanna be like Mike, be like Mike. We as Christians wanna be like Christ. We wanna be like Christ in how we live our lives. In fact, that's what the word Christians basically means, little Christs. Teresa of Avila gives a good vision of what that should look like when she writes, Christ has no body on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are Christ's body. Christ has no body on earth now but yours. That is a picture of us swept up in the life-transforming power of the resurrection here and now, and then bearing it into the world to help God transform it to his glory so that we live forgiveness. Forgiving not seven times, but like our Lord, forgiving again and again and again. Living reconciliation. Paul says that we are ambassadors of reconciliation. Who might you reconcile with in this pandemic when you have some time to think about that and to do that? To be an ambassador of reconciliation and to live our healing, to help fix the brokenness of this world with the Spirit's help, to live peace, to be able to bear Christ's peace, especially in this pandemic, to those who are fearful and anxious, to live his justice, to do justice wherever there is injustice, making sure, for example, that vaccines get especially to those who need it most and first, and to live in the end our Lord's love, loving God and neighbor, loving even our enemies by the power of God's Spirit as our Lord himself loved his neighbors and even his enemies knowing that our resurrection isn't only resurrection to eternal life, but is also a resurrection here and now. How are you living it? How might you also bear its life transforming power into the world to help God transform it? Please join me in prayer. God of the resurrection, then and now, help us to live our new life in your Son, to forgive as he forgave, to turn the other cheek, not retaliate, to reconcile with people, to help people, to tame our tongues, to be kind, to love as you loved, loving our neighbors and even our enemies. Yes, God, Renew us day by day through your spirit so that we are not the same person we were 20 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, or even three months ago. Renew us day by day until the day our resurrection is complete one day in eternal life with you. Alleluia. Amen. This is probably a new song to many. Um, it's actually one of my favorites. I have a sneaking suspicion that you'll be able to jump right in, even if you've never heard it before. But the words in this song are just so incredible. I just pray this morning that this is part of our worship to God, is that we are relying on Him because He is totally sovereign and totally faithful. Would you sing with me?
Please join me in prayer. Our Father, we come to you today with thanksgiving at a time when it seems like there's not much to be thankful for. And we appreciate and understand and thank you most that that is your story and your story for our lives. We have something to be thankful for, and that is you. We ask special help today. We're coming to you asking for help. We, 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 we're, we're asking for help for the widows of the coronavirus, the pandemic that is doing so much harm worldwide. We ask you for wisdom. We ask you for wisdom for our session and our pastor, our senior pastor and the staff here at the church. We ask help and wisdom for our entire denomination and knowing what to do and when to do it and how to move forward from here and most especially how we can best be your hands and your feet at this time when they're needed so drastically. We come in thanksgiving. We thank you for the technology that we can meet together. We thank you for a congregation. We thank you for our support for each other. We thank you for the leaders of our church holding things together in these trying times. And we want special help today for those who are sequestered in apartments on Hilton Head Island, Bluffton, for age limits, their uh, ability to move around for safety's sake. I know it's a trying thing, please help them a lot. And we ask for those in the nursing homes and their families. We ask for help for those who have lost their jobs and lost income. And those who own businesses who don't know where the year's income will come and have lost millions and millions of dollars, help them. 
We ask you for help too for our leaders. Give them wisdom now more than ever. Our mayor, our town council, our county council, our legislature, our state legislature, our Congress, our president. Give everyone, all of his staff and the, the health departments and the epidemiologists, give them wisdom. And we come mostly in thanksgiving for um, your words that you told us over and over and over again in your scriptures. Fear not, fear not. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And we thank you for those precious words. And we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, his blood on Calvary that gives us eternal life. And help us as we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm Lisa Trott, one of the pastors at First Presbyterian, and I want to add my welcome to that of Hannah's, which you heard earlier in our service. The life of our church continues in different forms, even though our church facility remains closed. Please keep a lookout for our daily emails, which contain a mix of devotions and important information on our worship and our programs. We do want to remain connected with you while we are physically apart. Opportunities for prayerful study, including classes for all ages and small groups are available. Visit our website at fpchhi.org for more detailed information, or you can email us at info at fpchhi.org. The Sunday Worship Bulletin located on our website also has more specific information on opportunities as well as today's announcements, including information on how you can receive a face mask made by our wonderful mask makers. Two important notices for this week. We would like everyone to prayerfully consider serving in the life of First Presbyterian Church as a church officer. The nominating committee is seeking the names for seven deacons and nine elders for the class of 2023. Please submit names of persons you recommend to info at fpchhi.org by June 15th. Nominees must be church members for at least a year and committed disciples of the Lord. As part of our call to sacrificial service, in addition to collecting canned goods for local pantries, we are collecting items for the Grateful Heart Soup Kitchen. During this pandemic, they are providing bag lunches for over 100 people twice a week. You can drop off items like granola bars, fruit snacks, individual bags of chips or juice boxes, um, or other items that would be easy to put into a lunch bag in the blue bin outside the church office doors. We at First Presbyterian Church very much appreciate your tithes, offerings, and gifts to help us be the church in this crisis. You can give via the Give button, which is located on the top of our website, or by mailing a check to the church, or via text. To give by text, send a text to 77977. In the message box, type FPC HHI, and you'll receive a one-time reply with a link to give. We also want you to know that the church wants to be there and wants to help you with any of your needs during this time. So please reach out to us with any needs that you might have you can um, contact either Pastor Will or myself directly or email info at fpchhi.org.
go to the world. Go into the world living your resurrection, your new life in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, transforming lives with the Spirit's help in this pandemic and always. Alleluia. Amen.